My favorite way to heat up a leftover burger or any food for that matter is to use a microwave oven. But have you wondered how does it work? How does it heat up things without fire? Well, it turns out that these ovens produce electric fields and burgers or any food items contain moisture which have water molecules and these water molecules are electric dipoles. But wait, how does that explain anything? For that, we need to investigate what happens when dipoles are kept inside an electric field. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. And towards the end of it, we're gonna figure out exactly how a microwave oven works. So let's begin. So let's say we have a uniform electric field inside which we keep an electric dipole. And just to quickly recap, what's an electric dipole? Well, two equal and opposite charges separated by some distance is a dipole. And what is this P thing? Well, remember, dipoles in themselves create this beautiful electric field. And the strength of the field everywhere depends on the product of the charge and the distance between the charges. And that product is what we call P, the dipole moment. The dipole moment represents the strength of the dipole. And why is it from negative to positive charge? It's, it's a vector, why is it this way? Because it kind of represents the direction in which it creates the field. You can see the field that dipole creates is away from the positive and it's coming into the negative and so the dipole moment kind of represents that. Now, we've talked a lot about this in our previous videos, so if you, need, if you feel you need a refresher, feel free to go back and check that out. But we don't have to worry about the field created by the dipole in this video, so don't worry about that. My question to you is, What's gonna happen to this dipole when I keep it inside an external electric field? Think about the forces that are gonna be acting on this dipole and see how the dipole may be moving. So can you pause the video and think about what would happen? All right, so I know positive charge experiences a force in the same direction as the electric field. And so it's gonna get pushed this way. And negative charge experiences a force in the opposite direction of the electric field. And so it's gonna get pushed this way. And since the two charges have the same strength and it's in the same electric field, the two forces will be exactly equal and opposite. And therefore, I know the net force acting on the dipole or the total force acting on the dipole is zero. So this means what happens to our dipole? Well, our dipole is not gonna accelerate. So if it was at rest, it's gonna stay at rest. It's not gonna move. It's gonna stay over here. But because the two forces are acting at two different points, we can kind of feel it in our bones this is gonna make it turn. Think about it, if you imagine these were strings attached and you pull it, what's gonna happen? It's gonna make it turn, it's, you can feel that, right? It's gonna make your dipole turn this way. And this turning effect provided by the force is called a torque. So although there is no net force acting on it, there will be some total torque that acts on our dipole. And in a future video, we'll calculate exactly what that torque depends on, and we'll derive an expression for that. But for now, let's see the effect of that torque. So the torque is going to make our dipole turn. The two forces are gonna make it turn. And what I want to know now is, will the dipole keep turning forever? So what I want to know now is, as the dipole turns, what happens to this torque? Does it stay the same? Does it increase? Does it decrease? Will its direction change? What would that depend on? So for that, we need to know a little bit about what does torque depend on. Well, torque definitely depends upon the strength of the force. If the forces are larger, we'll have more torque. But the torque also depends upon the distance between the two forces. So torque also depends upon this distance. If this distance is high, if this distance is far, if the forces are farther apart, torque is high. It's for the same reason when you look at a bicycle, the bicycle handles are far apart from each other because when you put a turning force on them using your hands, <laughs> these, are, these, are, these are the hands, okay? <laughs> the, the forces are far apart and so the torque becomes very high, it becomes easier to turn the handle. But imagine if this, uh, if this handle was not there, okay? And then you had to apply that same turning force directly on the rod. <laughs> now the forces would be so close to each other, the distance would be very small, the torque would be very small. It becomes so difficult to turn this. You can feel this, right? So torque also depends upon the distance between the two forces, and I want you to think about that. As the dipole turns, what happens to the distance? Will it increase, decrease, stay the same? So pause the video and think about it. Let me get rid of this epic drawing. Okay, let's see. A second later, our dipole is gonna turn and the forces come closer to each other. Can you see that? The distance between them has decreased. Ooh, so this means as the dipole turns, this torque becomes smaller. And the more it turns, the closer the forces get. The strength of the force stays the same, but the torque becomes smaller and smaller. 
eventually the dipole gets perfectly aligned and the forces are also along the straight line so the torque goes to zero. But now no, there is no torque. Now these forces are just pulling the dipole apart, not producing any turning effect. So now our torque has gone to zero. So I'll just delete that. And so long story short, what happened? Let me go back. When the dipole is not aligned, like when it's now perpendicular to the field, the torque acts until it gets aligned. Now in reality, even though, even though right now the torque is zero, as it turned, it gained momentum. It, it gained some speed. And so because of its inertia, it might overshoot a little bit. And now I want you to think, what if it overshot this way, what would now happen? Well now, again, there will be a torque, but this time, look, the torque would be in the opposite direction. Ooh, so again, we're seeing that the dipole is trying to get aligned in the direction of the field. So again, the moral of the story is dipoles experience a torque that aligns them or tries to align them in the direction of the field. So let's quickly check our understanding. What if I have an electric field to the left and I kept a dipole this way? What direction will be the torque? Clockwise or anti-clockwise and how will it align? Can you think? Okay, since P tries to align towards E, this time the torque will be anti-clockwise. And once it aligns, the torque disappears. Let's try one more. What will happen over here? Okay, again, P wants to align towards E, so this time the torque will be, ooh, clockwise. Again, once it aligns, torque disappears. One more. How will the torque be? Again, P tries to align towards E, and so this time the torque will be again anti-clockwise. Once it aligns, torque disappears. Okay, now let's really start having fun. So again, keep a dipole in electric field, torque acts on it until it aligns, right? And it overshoots because of its inertia, but the torque take care, takes care of it and aligns it. Now here's my question. What if, what if as the torque acts, as it overshoots, before it has time to align, I flip my electric field? What happens now? Well now the dipole says, okay, again I have to align, so it'll continue to turn. And again, before it has time to align itself, and when it overshoots, what if I flip my field again? What's gonna happen? Ooh, can you see what's happening? If I flip my electric field at the right time, I can keep that dipole turning. And that's exactly how your microwave ovens work. So what do microwaves ovens do? Well, they produce microwaves, of course. <laughs> but what are microwaves? They're electromagnetic radiation, and we'll talk more about them in the future videos. But what's important is that these microwaves contain flipping electric fields and they're actually flipping at billions of times per second. And when you keep any food item inside your microwave, pizza, burger, anything at all, you'll find that these food items always have some or the other moisture, which means water molecules, not so giant ones, but tiny water molecules. And uh, the important thing is these water molecules are electric dipoles. And you learn more about this in chemistry. It turns out that oxygen and hydrogen are sharing electrons and the shared pair of electrons are pulled more towards oxygen compared to hydrogen. As a result, oxygen becomes slightly negative, hydrogen becomes slightly positive, we have a dipole. Turns out that this dipole moment is very, very tiny, but that's all that, that's all that we need. That tiny dipoles, these tiny dipoles, when they come inside a flipping electric field, they will keep turning. And as they turn, they will make other, they will hit other molecules, they will make them vibrate. Pretty soon, all the molecules are jiggling, and as a result, your burger is gonna get hot very, very quickly. This is how microwave ovens work. Incredible, isn't it? To think, that we use, we use the idea that dipoles turn inside electric fields and we can use that to heat up food, that is mind boggling for me. It's pretty, pretty amazing if you ask me. So long story short, keep a dipole inside a uniform electric field, you will find that the total force acting on it is zero, so the dipole will not accelerate, but there will be a torque acting on it, and what does the torque do? It will always try to align the P vector or the dipole moment in the direction of the electric field.